Oh, that's scary. <laughs> Bad things will eventually happen in the woods. I've lost the trail again. It's not over there. On this first episode of Trail Fails, a new series I'm starting here, I'll go over the many failures of hiking and how you can learn from them. This first episode features Perez Lookout, a bucket list hike, and my most recent video if you want to see the entire story and what went terribly wrong at the end. Perez Lookout is a trail created by climbers to reach the Mackenzie Range to climb the many summits. My friends Dave, Darlene, and I headed up this hike without knowing much about it. There's a couple write-ups and a track that I found, which is more than enough to get up to the top of this mountain. So the first mistake we made is we followed a trail going up the wrong ridge for about 200 meters. That's wasted effort, especially on a really hot day. So the first piece of advice here is you're going up a new trail, have your phone out, make sure that you're staying on your track. While this was a minor inconvenience at the start, this ended up compounding into some major issues I was having this day. You see, the weather was about 35 degrees Celsius, so the air was warm and hot, and on the summit block, it was scorching hot up there. Throughout the entire hike, I was chasing my friends, I couldn't keep up with them, there was something wrong with my body, my normal energy just wasn't there, and this all ended up compounding into a major issue of me almost having a seizure and passing out on the way down. Also on the way down, Darlene ended up getting ahead of us and getting completely lost, and we didn't end up knowing that until we got back to the vehicle and she wasn't there. While I felt tired and slow going up the hike, I felt like I was going to pass out and my head was going to explode on the way down. But not only that, as days later, I lost my confidence that I could hike big mountains. So there's three main problems I had, dehydration, my pack weight, and my diet. So my diet and dehydration actually go hand in hand. See the day before this hike, I ended up eating a lot of dry food, lots of bread and crackers, things that likely dehydrated me. I remember going to bed and actually feeling my mouth was dry. So even though I drank a liter of water at the trailhead before the hike, it was likely that my body was absorbing all that to help digest my food from the day before. An indication of this is if you wake up and you don't have your morning constitution, then that's probably what's going on. By the time we found the waterfall near the top, I drank another 2 liters, so 3 liters total for this day. I ended up chugging a few liters of water at the waterfall and then filling up my bottle, so at this point I already drank 6 liters of water but I still felt thirsty. The temperature was 35 degrees, I was sweating profusely, everything was soaked, so I was losing this water so quickly. Now if we jump over to pack weight, my bag weighs 27 pounds, it's basically like I was backpacking because I carry all this camera gear. Now my friends, their bags probably weigh about half that. When hiking on flatter trails or class 2, you don't really feel the weight nearly as much as when you're scrambling up class 3 or class 4. As you actually have to pull yourself up, you feel all that weight pulling you down, gravity just has a stronger effect. And see how this trail was basically a class 3 scramble all the way up for 7 kilometers with small pieces of class 2 in between. It just absolutely exhausted me. My friends ended up having to wait up the trail like 5 minutes for me to catch up. They are getting breaks and eventually swarmed by mosquitoes. So whenever I'd catch up I would take 30 seconds and we'd keep going. So I wasn't getting the same rest and I was also carrying a much heavier bag. They had been standing for a while, I didn't want their muscles to get cold and then to get seized up by me taking a full 5 minute break as well because then they'd be standing for 10 minutes, so I'd just take a quick 30 seconds and we'd push on. For the first 9 hours of the 11 hour hike, I had that bag on my back with only a 10 minute break. We took one quick snack break about 3 quarters of the way up the route, and from there all the way to the summit most of the way down, I had the bag on my back until eventually I just started keeling over and I needed to sit down or eventually end up just laying down on the trail because I couldn't handle it anymore. This all comes down to just fundamental problems with the goal of the hike, so I'd recommend you kind of look at what your goals are and what your friends goals are and make sure those are aligned. In my case, my friends didn't end up coming up to the Perez Lookout Summit, they were sitting down below, so they got a nice break, took their bags off, had some food, had some water, had a break. I ended up bushwhacking up a very steep cliff, exerting a lot of energy, then I took my hat off and got drone shots while still standing and needed the bag on my back to make it look better on camera. It took me a few minutes to scramble up the summit block and a few minutes back down. I had my drone in the air for 16 minutes and it took a couple of extra shots. So it ended up being 25 minutes where once again I wasn't taking a break, I was just filming and they had a break. So compounded, they had almost an hour of breaks with all the little breaks going up the mountain 
as well as the 25 minutes sitting down there where I only had 10 minutes at the one snack break. As soon as I got back down, they wanted to start heading down, but I didn't get a break. This has pushed me further into exhaustion, which is all my fault because I didn't vocalize that I needed to get a break. You can see Dave's viewpoint from his public post in a hiking group. Things started to go wrong from the top. David wanted to do some videoing, which took some time. Normally, Dar and I have very set time on summits related to downtime travel. The pair's lookout is very exposed to the sun with no shade, so even though you're not doing anything, you get dehydrated. So this just comes down to communication. I didn't properly communicate that, you know, I'd want to hang out there for an hour and get a bunch of shots and stuff. I'm pretty sure they were set to do Marble Meadows or at least go over there the next day. So they wanted to tag the summit and go back down and kind of get ready for that. So we just had different objectives in life. So I think it's important people talk to their group members and to see what everyone is wanting to do and make sure those those goals align. We started heading down at about 3.30 p.m. To me, I could have easily stayed up there another hour and a half. It still gave me plenty of time, three or four hours to get down to the bottom. And I'd have no problem hiking down in the dark if I have to. But once again, I just didn't communicate any of this stuff. So there's a lot of lessons learned for me here on how to be a, a better hiker with a group. I spent the last three months hiking by myself doing over 50 hikes. So it's something I have to kind of readjust to. One little side note about the sun up there, it is very exposed, there's not much shade. You can see from this drone shot, basically you can sit behind Paris Lookout itself if the sun is at around 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, there's a few spots behind a couple bushes and there's a couple big boulders up there you can sit behind. Um, you can sit right against them, that's the only place to really get shade so it's pretty open and hot exposed area up there. So you can quickly see it's my filming is the problem because I'm always prioritizing getting shots and not my body. My body gets wrung through the ringer. It starts to fall apart. After getting off the summit block, we decided to just put snow in our bottles versus taking the short detour over to the waterfall to get actual water. In the future, I wouldn't do this again because even though it was 35 degrees, that snow took so long to melt and it only ended up filling about 30% of my bottle versus just going over to the waterfall, which was two minutes walk away and just filling up my bottle. Snow is great for stuffing in your hat to cool down your head but don't bother wasting your time putting in a bottle. So having fundamental different objectives, me being wanted to shoot more footage up there and then wanting to tag and get back home quickly, I think we should have just brought two different vehicles. Now technically my car was in the shop but 99.9% .9 of the time my car isn't in the shop when I go out for a hike. So I should have brought my own vehicle then I could have descended at my own rate and then I could have gone over to the waterfall and just laid in the water for a while, cooled down my body because I was overheating badly and just got proper water, not, no snow in my bottle and just gone down a lot slower. The other option here, what I should have done is vocalize that I needed to go take a dip and cool down my body because I was overheating. But once again, I was just keeping to myself and not saying much. Now, if we split into two different groups, my friends could have head down quickly and then head over to Marble Meadows and we'd both achieve our objectives in just different ways. Now, this isn't advice for everyone, but I'm very comfortable in the backcountry by myself, so I have no problem descending this whole mountain solo. So as we started heading down, my condition started to worsen, and as Dave wrote in his write-up, we started down with full water bottles, and for Dar and I, it was going well. For David, on the other hand, I noticed his slowing pace and poor balance. At this point, I was stumbling down the mountain like a drunken sailor, and my head felt like it was going to explode from heat exhaustion. I'd fallen so far behind that I just kept on pushing myself as hard as I could to try to keep up, and really, I just needed to voice my condition and say there's no Way I can get keep that speed because I'm gonna pass out. So you can see a running theme here. My poor communication is getting me into a bad situation. Every step when you have that much weight just grinds your knees. It's quite brutal on the body. When I eventually caught up to them, they could tell I was not in good shape. We ended up taking a good five minute break. I got the pack off. So after that break, I had 19 minutes that day. I didn't have that pack on my body. Within a few minutes though, I was once drifting behind too far. With about half of the descent left, Dave noticed my balance was off and decided to hike behind me. Now this is the next section where Dar gets lost on an old trail up there. As Dave's write-up says, at this point you're only as quick as your slowest member and he ran out of water quickly, that being me. This is a long climb down, Dar would go ahead and wait for us and then go ahead again. With David getting slower, unfortunately Dar missed a turn. Dar and I would yell Marco Polo to each other and now I would not get a response. So basically what happened is Dar got too far ahead of us and ended up taking an old trail up the wrong way. About a quarter of the way up the trail, there's a 90 degree turn which used to go to the right and up a trail and then they made a new trail going 90 degrees the other direction to the left. So when she came down, she missed the turn off and just ended up going around in a circle and back up the mountain. She ended up doing a couple circles like that and couldn't figure out where to get off the trail. Now to top things off, as we were going down, she gave me about a liter of her water. So after she did a couple circles and couldn't find the exit, she ended up running out of water herself and started to become dehydrated. 
Now if we think back, if we had split into two groups, I had my own vehicle at the bottom, then Dave and Darlene would have just gone down together, she wouldn't have got lost, I would have just gone down by myself, I wouldn't have got lost, but I would have just been much slower, and we wouldn't have run into that problem with her getting lost up that wrong trail. As we were going down, Dave was just telling me take breaks whenever you need them. I ended up going down about 15-20 minutes at a time and then taking a 5 minute break and just doing that continually until I ran out of water and then eventually I just had to lay down in the fetal position on the trail because that was the only thing that felt cool was the actual ground in the shade. This worked and got me down the mountain. The problem is every time I took a break, every time I picked up my bag, it felt like it was 10 pounds heavier every time as I was getting weaker. The other problem I was having is I broke off the top of my trekking pole. The cork handle busted off, so as I was using it, the metal bar would be stabbing into my hand. Now I hike with one trekking pole and one tripod. A tripod makes a terrible pole to descend such a steep slope, so I actually had put that away and wasn't using it anymore. And after that, we were able to make a push down to the river at the bottom that saw water, end up drinking a couple of liters, and then went the final three quarters of a kilometer back to the vehicle and where I had a big jug of water there to also drink. But the main thing we noticed when we got there is Darlene wasn't there because we hadn't heard or caught up to her in a while. Dave quickly gathered his stuff back up, ran back up the mountain and found her at that junction where the trail split at 90 degrees to the left, thinking that she probably went the other way. This ended up being the case, she was there, she was freaked out, she was dehydrated, she ended up calling the SOS on her Garmin, Dave brought her back down and cancelled the SOS call, and they made it out just before it got dark in there. So the main lessons to take away here is dehydration is absolutely brutal. I'd also watch what you eat the day before. From now on, whenever I do a big hike that's a thousand meters or more, I'll be eating a ton of food that is rich in water. For example, foods like apples, celery, anything like that, nothing dry. This situation could have been a lot worse if there was no water up there. If you're not super experienced with navigating, it's better to stay closer to your group. In the case of me personally, I'm going through different ways that I can limit my bag weight. I've decided any mountains that are over about 1100 meters. I have to have a different bag with different camera setup so I don't get completely grinded down going up the mountain. For me this means getting rid of my 3.1 pound tripod that's in my left hand which ended up causing pain in my wrist kind of like carpal tunnel after doing this hike and after another hike that was really big doing this so I know for a fact I shouldn't be carrying that 3 pound weight in my hand the entire time on these big hikes. I either need to take a smaller lighter tripod or no tripod. I also need to limit my camera gear and use a trail bag and not a backpacking bag. That way my base weight is significantly lower. I should have brought salt pills with me and been taking those along the trail as well as some sort of easy digestible quick access fuel like those cliff shots or anything with a lot of sugar in it. I should have communicated with my group so they knew how I was feeling and what was going wrong with my body and made it known that I needed 5 or 10 minutes to get that bag off of my back so my lungs and my legs could get a rest. With that said, I should have known hiking with two of my friends that are really fast, I shouldn't be bringing a super heavy backpack with a lot of camera gear, I should have packed it nice and light so I could have easily kept up with them. Throw in the extremely hot day, dehydration, and my diet from the day before, and this just all spiraled right out of control. I definitely made a lot of mistakes this day, but it's also very eye-opening. I started to put together a new setup that's much lighter for these bigger days. I've learned I really need to better communicate with my group. So that does it for this first episode of Trail Fails. Hopefully you got some value out of this and learned some lessons and don't do what I did. The main takeaway is don't mess around with extreme heat and dehydration. It's an absolute killer out there. If you enjoy these videos, please support me by sharing my videos on your Facebook. That's an easy, no-cost way of supporting my channel. If you want to support my channel directly, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash davidhiking. And until the next episode, have a great day.